Hi there, welcome back. I'm going to continue where I left off in a previous video, showing you an overview and round one of Wingspan. And today I'm showing you round two and onwards. And today I'm still playing the solo playthrough, as I did in the previous video. If you haven't watched that already, I would recommend you go back and watch that one. I'll link it down below. Okay, so I want to play this California quail. So I'm going to pick up one of my action cubes over here, put it into the gain food area of the action board, and I'm going to gain one food from the supply. So I've already got the invertebrate and the seed I need for this California quail. So I will take this singular die out of the bird feeder, and that will allow me to take one seed from the supply. Pop that over there. Slide that over. And that is the end of my first turn in round two. Let's see what the Automa does. The Automa wants to draw birds and will add one action cube to the round two goal track. So we'll pop that over there. And they want to grab any birds with colors in their names. So we'll look over here and we'll see there are no birds over there with colors in their names. So we will grab one card from the supply and put it face down in front of the Automa, which is four points at the end of the game. Back to me. I will now play this California quail, which is going to cost one invertebrate and two seeds, which I have prepared over here. So I'm going to spend those two seeds and that one invertebrate and play, placing my action cube in the player bird section, and play this California quail into my forest area, you'll see it's got this little woodland or grassland symbol. So it could be played in either the grassland or the woodland. In this instance, I want to play it in the grassland area so that every time I gain food in the future, my action cube will slide over and when activated, lay one egg on this bird. So every time I get food in the future, which I'm going to have to keep doing in order to get more birds into my habitat, I will get more eggs onto this California quail. And eggs are points. We'll slide that over, go back to the automaton, flip them over again. He wants birds from the supply with colors in their names. There are none. So we take one face down, which is four points at the end of the game. And that's all that happens for round two. And now I have to think about my next action. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to need food for these guys. So I will gain food again, popping that over there. Discard a card, one of these more expensive cards that are harder to get, in order to get a second food. So I'm going to discard this wood stalk because it requires fish, rodents, and something else. And I can see that there's none of those in the bird feeder. So chances of me getting that into play anytime soon are pretty slim. So I'm rather going to discard that to get an extra food towards one of these other birds. Discard him over there. Draw two food from the bird feeder. And I can see that this eastern bluebird requires an invertebrate and a fruit. And it just so happens those are both in the bird feeder. So I'll take both of those out of the bird feeder and get a fruit and an invertebrate, ready for my eastern bluebird to go collect. This action cube will slide over. When activated, lay one egg on this bird. So we'll lay one egg on my California quail and slide that over to there. Okay, that's the end of my action. Let's see what the Automa does. The Automa will draw another card. He's just collecting all the cards this turn. Not interested in doing anything else. And back to me. I now see that I've got the snowy egret, which will allow me to roll all dice not in the bird feeder. And if any are fish, I gain one fish and cash it on this card, which is worth points at the end of the game. Now is a really good time to do that because there's a whole bunch of dice not sitting in the bird feeder. 
So I'm going to take this action cube, I'm going to pop it over here, and I'm going to get two cards. Let's see, which two cards do I want? I will take this black vulture, because you'll see it's got no food cost in order to play it. It simply just shows up. And it's got one of these pink powers, which activate between turns. You'll see on this Automa card that it sometimes has a little pink, activate all pink powers box over here, which means that every time that Automa card is activated, this bird would activate and potentially give me some more food. So I'm gonna take that for one of my two cards. And I'm not wild about either of those, so I'm gonna take another one blind from the top of the deck, add that to my hand over here. And that's quite a nice one. A purple Martin, that's gonna be quite a good one to play because it's really cheap to get into play. And one of the end of round goals is to have lots of eggs in the water habitat. So if I can play this into my water habitat, I can start working towards that round four objective. Okay, we will now move the action cube over. That was my two cards. Roll all dice, not in the bird feeder. Let's do that. Looking for some fish for my snowy egret. And he didn't find any. Such is life. Pop this over here. Discard one egg from any of your other birds to gain one food from the supply. I shall do that. I shall discard this egg from my California quail and gain any one food from the supply. Which means I will gain one more invertebrate towards playing this scissor-tailed flycatcher because I'm already two-thirds of the way there. I've got the invertebrate and the fruit I need. I just need one more invertebrate to be able to play that. So let's get that invertebrate. And then I can probably play that on my next turn. We'll pop that action cube over. Turn is done. The automa goes. And the automa will draw another card. My goodness. The automa is just raking in the birds in his habitat over there. We will add another cube to the round two tracker. Oh, and round two's objective is total number of birds. So whoever has the most birds will get first place. Second most will get second place, which is only worth two points. So currently, if we look at our end of round goals card for the Automa, the total number of birds he has by default are five plus however many action cubes are sitting on the end of round goal card over there. So currently the Automa has essentially seven bird cards. So I need to try and get lots more birds played out into my reserve. I'm probably not going to beat seven though, because I only have three actions left. So, unless I play lots of really cheap birds, that might be a way to go. I've already got three. And I've got these birds that only cost one food or no food. But I would have to get eight birds to get more than him, or seven, in which case we will split that score at the end of the game. So I think I'm going to stick with my original plan rather, just get second place and be okay with that. I'm going to play a bird with my next action into the grasslands habitat, playing my scissor-tailed flycatcher. Paying one, two invertebrates and a fruit. Sliding that over. And now my lay eggs action has gotten slightly better. That was the end of my turn. The automa has a go. Oh, and this last card we played for the automa says remove after round two. So rather than digging through the deck later, I'll simply remove it now during round two. Make that straight over there. Now, we'll flip over the next card for the Automa. And he's looking for food. Okay, immediately, if the, all the dice in the bird feeder are the same, when this action is revealed for the Automa, we automatically re-roll all dice in the bird feeder and out of it. And now, we proceed with this action. So he wants fruit, 
there is no fruit. Secondly, he wants rodents. So now they will take out all the rodents. And all pink powers would activate. So if I had any birds with pink powers, like this black vulture, for instance, that would activate right now. I do not, so it doesn't. And I continue with my next turn. And I just noticed that I forgot to replenish the supply earlier when I finished my drawing birds action. I tend to forget these little administrative steps from time to time. A great horned owl has appeared. Hmm, well that's a tricky one to get. It is a very hungry bird. Okay, so next action, I'm gonna get some food this time. Let's pop that over there. We'll get one food, or I could discard a bird to get a second food. Ah, but wait. Rather than doing that, let me put my action cube up at the top here. I will pay one egg in order to play a bird into my forest habitat. And I'm gonna play this black vulture because that requires no food. And currently I have no food. So that's quite a good one to play now. I'll pop that in there. That just cost me the one egg. That will slide over. And now I've got one of these pink powers in my preserve. So when these activate all pink powers icons pop up on the automa card, I'll benefit from them instead of them just passing by. And I have now made my gain food action better. So every time I go here, I will by default get two food instead of just the one. Okay, so Automa's turn. Flip over a card. Automa will get two eggs from the supply. And we will now remove one action cube from the round tracker. So the Automa just lost one of his birds. And now for my final action of round two, my final little action cube over here, I will pop it over there and I will gain two food from the bird feeder over there. And I'll see that all of these birds I currently have in my hand require invertebrates. So the two food I'm going to gain will be those two. I'll take those two dice out of the dice tower and I will gain the invertebrate food resource from them. I could gain seeds if I wanted to, but none of these birds want seeds. I'll move my action cube over. These pink powers do nothing at this stage. Move it over again. When activated, lay one egg on this bird. My California quail is a very busy little body. And that is the end of round two. Oh, but wait, the automa has one final turn. Let's see what he does. Gain one bird from the supply. We would look for any birds with colors in their names, grab all of them and keep the highest point value. None of those have colors in their names currently. So we'll grab one face down at random and add it to their pile. Oopsie, straighten that out. And we will add one more cube back to the round tracker. That bird that flew away just came back for the automa. And now we will pause and we'll do some end of round maintenance. The first thing we do is we check the goal. So the goal for round two is the total number of birds. So I will count my total birds. I have one, two, three, four, five birds in my preserve. And I will compare that to how many birds the automa has. The automa as we saw earlier, has five birds by default, plus one for each action cube over there, for a total of seven. So the automa has more than me, therefore gaining first place. I take one of my action cubes and pop it over there on second place. As you can see in round one, I did really poorly. I got nothing towards the goal for round one, so I got zero points. Now round two, I've only got two points. So this automa is playing pretty hard today. We take that excess cube and we put it back in their supply. Pick up the automa deck and give it a quick shuffle. Then we flip over the current round tracker so that we can see the round three side. 
visible. Pop that over there. Straighten that out. And continue with round three. And one more thing before we start round three, I need to flip over this end of round goals card. We'll discard this one off to the side over there. And now we've got the round three one. So we'll check this against our round three goal, which is birds with platform nests with one or more eggs in them. So for each of those, we will count one. We can see on my preserve over here, I have two birds with platform nests, but neither of them have any eggs in them. So by the end of the round, I want to try and make sure I have at least one egg on each of those. Pop that back over there. Then we'll check the Automa's end of round scoring card and we'll see that for any time you have this birds with a certain nest and eggs, it is two by default. So two is currently the number to beat. But as you've seen, more cubes can be added over there, making that number higher. So I need to make sure I have at least these two birds with eggs in them. Preferably, I want to get some more platform nests and get eggs on those. So that's something to work towards for the end of the game. I also have my Uologist goal card that I drew at the beginning of the game, which is quite simple. It's just birds that have at least one egg laid on them. So if I can have seven to eight birds with at least one egg on them, that will be worth three points at the end of the game. And every egg is worth points. So with all that in mind, let me try get this black turn played because this black turn has got a star symbol there. That means it has any type of nest. So that will help me towards this current round objective. And it is a waterfowl, which is what we want for round four. So I'm working towards that round as well, killing two birds with one stone. Or should I say attracting two birds with one worm? Let's see. I take all my action cubes and pop them off the board over there. And let's try work towards getting this black turn in play, which I can actually do right away. So I'm going to start round three by doing so. Pop that action cube over there. Spend one egg off my quail. Spend one invertebrate out of my supply. And play this black turn into my water habitat. And that is the end of my first action. The Otama will once again look for birds in the supply with colors in their names. There are none. So we draw blind and add that to his pile. He's getting quite the collection over here. And add one cube to the current round tracker. So to attract some more birds to this preserve, I'm going to need two things. I'm going to need food. So now I need to start thinking about getting some more food and getting some more eggs out here. Because every time I want to play another bird, I'm going to need to spend one egg. So what would probably be smart is to try play another bird into my lay eggs grassland area, which will allow me to lay three eggs every time I take that action instead of just two. So with that in mind, I need to lay eggs first. So I'm going to take this action cube and I'm going to pop it over there and take the lay eggs action. Laying two eggs by default. So let's get those. I could spend one food to lay an extra egg, which I might just do. Yes, I will do that because I'm about to trigger this scissor tailed flycatcher's ability, which says when activated, all players gain one invertebrate from the supply. So I'll be getting that food back if I spend it now to get more eggs. So I will spend that invertebrate to gain a third egg. I can now lay these anywhere. I will lay them down here because that is working towards our end of round goal. And we'll put one over there. Okay, then slide that over. All players gain one invertebrate from the supply. So that invertebrate that I just spent comes back and that slides over to there. Now, 
off to the Otama. Flip a card. Look for birds with colors in their names. There are none. Draw blind, add it to their pile, and add a action cube to the end of round track. Now I would like to play another bird into my lay eggs grassland area. So let's take an action cube, pop it over there, spend an egg from one of my other birds, play this purple marten into my grasslands area, spend in one invertebrate to do so. And this purple marten now has this, when activated, tuck one card from your hand behind this card, and if you do, draw one at the end of the turn. And tucked cards count for points at the end of the game. For each card tucked under this bird, that is one additional point. So we'll pop that back over there, slide our action cube over, flip over the automa, and they will simply draw one face down card, adding it to their supply. And now I have some decisions to make. I've only got one bird left in my hand, but it is not a very helpful bird because it has a immediate effect, which is play a second bird in your grasslands habitat. And I have no other birds in my hand and I have no food to play them. So now might be a good time to take an action cube, have my birds lay some more eggs, getting three and use this tuck ability to tuck that bird and draw another one. So we'll get three eggs, we'll pop one down there. We will pop one also down here. I'm looking now at my round four goal, which is eggs in the wetland habitat. So I'm going to try build up as many eggs down here as I can. So I'll place my third egg down there as well. Slide the action cube over, tuck this card under the purple marten. Zoop. Tucked in there. When activated, if you do draw one card, so I draw one card right now, I could draw one of these face up ones. And you might think I should draw this great horned owl because it has a platform nest, which is our current objective. But I've only got two actions left and that's gonna cost three rodents to play. And I have no food and there's no rodents in the dice tower. So that's probably not a good one to play at this stage. So I'm actually going to draw blind and hope for something useful. And I drew a hermit thrush, which has a when activated ability, which is the players with the fewest birds in their woodland habitat gain one food from the bird feeder. But playing the solo mode against the automa, that doesn't really help. Because whenever you need to compare yourself against the automa, you win by default. So in this instance, I would technically always have more birds than the automa in this area. So that ability doesn't help much, but it does have a wild nest. So that can count for any nest type for end round goals. And it is worth seven points, but it's quite expensive. So I don't know that that's one I will necessarily play. That might be a good one to tuck under my purple Martin in the future. So, we slide that over, we activate our scissor-tailed flycatcher, all players gain one invertebrate from the supply. That's rather nice, and pop that over there. End of turn, see what the automa does. They get some more eggs. One, two eggs for them. And add another cube to the end of round tracker. So I am pretty much guaranteed to come in second on this round again, considering they've already got three cubes, not counting their base value of two. And I've only got three. So that's pretty much a done deal. I'm not going to be able to beat the Otoma on that one because even if I draw more birds, I've only got two actions left for this round. So let's see, perhaps, Perhaps I should draw more birds. I'm going to play my action cube over there, 
gaining two cards. I will spend one egg to draw a third card in order to widen my options for this tucking ability. And I will grab this hooded warbler. And I won't take either of those because those are both very expensive birds to play. They require a lot of food. So I'm not going to grab them. I'm going to rather draw two more cards at random from the deck. I'll simply add those to my hand. Then slide the action cube over, draw one card. If you do, discard one card from your hand at the end of your turn. So I can draw another card, which is quite nice. Add another option to my hand. Slide this one over. When activated, roll all dice not in the bird feeder. If any are fish, gain one and cash it on this card. So we're looking for some fish. My snowy egret is going hunting. And they succeeded. Jolly good snowy egret. Got some fish for dinner. So I get one fish, which I cash on this card. Slide the action cube over. Discard one egg from any of your other birds to gain one food from the supply. I will do that. Discard one egg. And I will gain another invertebrate because all my birds over here want invertebrates. Let's pop that over there. That goes over there. And play the Automas next turn. They get three eggs. My goodness. Lots of eggs for the Automa this turn. And remove one cube from the end of round tracker. Back to me. And I just spotted, I forgot to replenish the supply here. And when I played this black turns ability, I drew one card, but I forgot to discard one from my hand at the end of my turn. So let's rectify those quickly. I will discard, I will replenish. A spotted sandpiper has shown up on the display. And now I have to pick one of these to get rid of. I think I will get rid of this hermit thrush that we drew earlier because that requires a lot of food that I do not have. So that will get discarded over there. We'll bring that in there so we can see it easily. And now I'll play another turn. The final turn of round three. So for my next action, I'm going to get some more food to start working towards playing some of these guys. So I'll pop that over there, gain two food. I could re-roll all the dice because all the dice in the bird feeder are the same, but the birds over here actually need seeds. So I'm gonna take that for one seed from the supply. Then I'm going to re-roll everything. And now I can take a second food which will be another seed. We'll use one of these wilds and take another seed. Move our action cube over. Pink powers don't do anything when activated. And my California quail lays an egg every time they're activated. We do one more turn for the automa, which is to draw a card. Place down in front of them and remove an action cube from the board over there. Now we tally up our end of round goals. We see how well we did. I have three. This one with a platform nest, a platform nest, and this wild, which is also counted as a platform nest. The automa has two by default plus one over here. So we actually both have three. I thought I was going to lose that one substantially, but instead we tied because of those last couple of cards removing cubes. Remember, I'm spending eggs to do stuff. So that is simulating the automa doing the same as if it were another player. So now when we're tied, we both take one action cube and we put it on the first place marker and then at the end of the game, we will take first and second place, add them together and divide by two. And that will be how many points we both would score. We now 
shuffle in the Otama's deck. Give that a quick shuffle. Pop it over there, straighten that, and flip it round. So we're now reminded to look at the bottom row when flipping these cards. We will flip over the end of round goal cards, and we will check the current round four goal is total number of eggs in your water habitat. So I've already got three towards that one. The Otama has a base value of eggs in any given habitat, a base value of seven. So I've got my work cut out for me to catch up with that. So I need to be laying eggs a lot in this final round, which is not a bad idea because every egg you have is worth one point. So we'll move all of our cubes off to the side. That's the final step of maintenance. We now only have five actions, so this round four is typically the fastest. And I should really work on this end of round goal because round four is the one that scores the most points for having the majority. So let's see. I do have all this food ready though. So the first thing I'm going to do is play a bird over there, paying one egg, which I will do from the top here because that doesn't impact the end of round goal. And then I'm going to play this downy woodpecker, which you will see has no ongoing effect, but it has an immediate effect, which allows me to play a second bird in my woodland habitat. So for one action, I'm playing two birds. So I'll play that over there paying an invertebrate, a seed, or a fruit. So I will pay a seed to play that downy woodpecker. Now I want to play one of these others. All three of these birds could be played there. So let's play this hooded warbler because that one is worth the most points of the birds I have available to me. That will go over there but I still have to pay the two eggs as if I had placed my action cube there. You have to pay the full cost when you do these actions. So I will pay these two eggs from down at the bottom there and these two invertebrates from the supply and slide over my action cube and trigger the first action for round four for the Otoba which is to gain food. The Otoma will remove all mice, all rodents from the bird feeder and then activate all pink powers. Haha, this is the first time I'm actually benefiting from that. So I will now look at my black vulture over here, which says when another player's hunt succeeds, gain one food from the bird feeder. So I just presume that another player's hunt has succeeded and I gain one food of my choice from the bird feeder. So let's gain this fruit. Although I'm not planning to play any more birds. My turn again. I need to now start using this lay eggs action to A, work towards beating out the automa on the end of round goal, B, getting eggs for points at the end of the game, and C, this oologist goal that I drew right at the beginning of the game scores for having at least seven birds with eggs on them. So I want to spread my eggs out a bit but still focus on this objective here. So I'll pop that over there and with that said we will take the lay eggs action gaining three eggs and let's put one down here We'll put another one, actually, let's put one down there, one down there. I need to get at least seven eggs down here. That is not easy. Hmm. And one more down here, working towards that end goal. Activate my purple Martin. Tuck a card from your hand behind this bird, and if you do, draw one. So we'll just grab one of our birds over there and tuck that. And that is worth a point at the end of the game. So this is quite a good little chain I've built up over here.
to trigger out these last few turns. Then my scissor-tailed flycatcher gets a invertebrate from the supply. End of turn, check the automa. They will look for any birds with colors in their names, which there are not, so we will draw a face down card from the supply. And they will add one cube to the end of round tracker. Back to me. I will take the lay eggs action once again. Get three eggs, and I will, two, four, six. And I will realize that there is no possible way I can beat the automa on this end of round goal. Because all the birds in my water habitat down here have a max of two eggs on them. So this one's already maxed out, so I can have a total of six eggs down here. So there's no way I can possibly beat that. So I should rather spread them out and work towards my private goal. With that realized, let me put my eggs, one there, one over there, one over there. Spreading them out to get as many as I can for this oologist objective. Ooh, I forgot. Tuck a card from your hand behind this bird. If you do draw one, I was meant to draw a bird after tucking a bird last turn. Now, pop my action cube over there and repeat. Tuck and draw one, which will be that. We'll slide that over, gain a invertebrate from the supply. Pop that over there and trigger off the automa. So as you can see, once you've played out a few rounds, the turns tick over pretty quickly once you've built out your habitat and got a nice little chain of bird actions going. So let's look at the Automas card. For round four, they will draw a face down card from the supply and remove one of their action cubes. Not that that helps me, as we've discovered. And I will take my second to last action Pick that up. I will take the lay eggs action once again. Gaining three eggs, which I will put over there, over there, and over there. I now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine birds with eggs on them, which is good for six points at the end of the game. So that is now that objective fulfilled as well as it can be. We will slide this over, tuck a card under my purple marten. Tuck, 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 and draw a replacement. As you'll notice, I'm not even bothering looking at them because I just keep tucking them. We'll tuck, slide that over there. All players gain one invertebrate from the supply. Over there, play out in another action for the automa. They will gain three eggs, my goodness. One, two, three. They were clearly feeling left out on this egg laying game I've been playing. And they will add one cube to the end of round objective. And now it is my final turn. So I have one last action to play. Final little action cube. So now I should think about what is likely to get me the most points for this final action. I know if I go here, I get three eggs, which is one point each, plus one if I tuck a card under there, which is what I've been doing. So that's four points each time I take this action. Which is pretty much the best thing I can do, because gaining food at this point in the game doesn't help much. Gaining more cards doesn't really help, and this is the only card down here that will possibly score me something. But it's a gamble because you've got to roll dice and maybe get what you need. So, I'll take my final action. It will be a repeat of what the last several have been. Gain three more eggs, and this time we can spread them out. Let's just put them all down here. 
So I've at least got six down here, even though it doesn't really help. And we'll put this final one over there. Slide that over, tuck a card under my purple Martin. Draw in a replacement. Slide that over, gain a invertebrate from the supply. And there we have my final action. We will now take one more action for the Automa, which is a card we were supposed to remove after round three. So we will discard that Off to the side there. Reveal another one. And they will draw one card face down into their supply and add an action cube to the end of round. And there we have it. That is the final action of the game. Now for final scoring. We will grab the handy little score sheet included in the game. Pop that over there. And we will now proceed to tally up the points for our birds. So first, before I do mine, we'll do the automa. We check this little automa bun society box because I played with that today. That is this card over here, which you will possibly see says to remove if you want a less challenging game. As you can see, this is the one that keeps on drawing birds for them. So I played with that today to play on a slightly more difficult version of the solo mode. So I mark off on the score track that I played with that. I will circle this little four over here to indicate that each of these face down cards in the Automa's supply is worth four points. That's the standard game. If you play on easy, each of those is only worth three. And if you play on hard, each of those is worth five. So with that little bit of admin out the way, let's count the points. 52 for their face down cards. We then look at any face up cards they drew, which you'll see all have colors in their names, which matches their goal card that they drew at the beginning of the game. So that is seven, eight, nine, ten points for their face up cards. So they score 10 points over there. I simply look at the point value next to the feather on each of my cards. 42. Let's just make sure I'm doing that right. <laughs> uh, calculator to the rescue. Equals 42. My math in my head was right. Ha! Okay. 42. So already the Otom is winning. I now look at my bonus cards. I have nine plus birds with eggs laid on them. So that is good for six points. You will see the Automa doesn't actually score for their bonus card. That's purely for helping them draw cards during the game. We now look at the end of round, which I forgot to score for the final round of the game. So we can take a look. I've got six. We know the Automa had seven plus two for eight, so the Automa had more. So they get first place. I take one of my action cubes, pop it over there for second place. We'll remove that one. And now on our score track, we see end of round goals. The Automa will score four, plus five is nine, plus six is 15, it is 22 points for them. And I get zero and two, that is eight plus four is 12. Oh dear, not very good. Not very good at all. I now count up all my eggs. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 eggs for me. And the Otama, two, four, six, eight, 10, 11. Finally, food on cards. We now look at any food cached on cards. I only have the two from my snowy egret. So that is only two points. And now I will look at tucked cards. So we will remove that. 
We'll look at all the cards tucked under this purple Martin, which are one, two, three, four, five. So that is five points for those. For a grand total of 80 points for me. And 52 plus 10, 62, 95 for the Otama. So, 80 points for me and 95 points for the Otama. We can say that they somewhat thrashed me today. <laughs> so, there you have Wingspan. Thanks for joining me as I played through this solo mode against the Otama and got thoroughly beaten. <laughs> Perhaps you can do better. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the show.